Friends, welcome to Star Trek New Horizons. We're playing as the United Nations of Earth. And I am looking forward to this. So, um, by now, episode 1 has been released. And I've changed the names of my scientists to Elf Jonathan or Wolf. We have... Let's scroll down here a bit. Actually, scroll up. Because I just... We got the... Um, uh, e Kodiak or E.H. Kodiak. We got... Greska Zero and the Elusive Man. I won't change the name Jonathan Archer because I think he is uh, such an important name that you guys would really hate it if I were to uh, name or change his name. Now, for those of you who are not in the series yet and want to be in there, leave me comments and uh, of course keep on pressing that like button because I'm loving it so far. So, right now we have our construction ship going to the Nebula Accordius where the the Nobleian species are and we're going to be building a, another research post over there. We might even be able to bring them up into the Federation once that time is ripe. We need to expand towards the Confederacy of Solak or the Vulcans in order to Our get... Our presence would indicate that diplomacy has failed. Is this get, correct? Could you... Thank you. To get the negative distance of 21 uh, away from that, uh, we'll probably... will be able to make sure we can get them into our coalition by just just trading stuff away that's why i would like to start focusing a bit more on alloys because it is rather on the low side always walk cautiously under the ice the andorians just don't like the tellerites so we'll have to see how that will change eventually they will form in and uh, we'll just see how this game will progress i would like to go to sirius I would like to go to War 424 to get more planets. I would like to get a lot more influence because we're making a half an influence each month. So that is not all too much. As for you, we're building up more uh, educational uh, districts. We still have 11 luxuries. And once we hit 8... We're going to be focusing on alloy production on Mars. And we'll focus more on food over on this planet. Because we have food from jobs plus 10. Which is great. Which is really great. So we've got the uh, Militia Academy and the um, Division Headquarters. And we'll be uh, pausing here for a second. Mm. Bunker Networks. Space to sp of ground to space defense or administrative. So the maximum amount of administrative districts can be built and standard of the plans will increase by plus two. Interesting. Um, influence and see. Uh, temporary. Empire edicts are temporary empire wide. Okay, well, we don't want that right now, so we'll go for the administrative. What do we get? Uh oh. So, they have declared rivals. Uh, we got the um, Direrium Forge. Which is quite nice. And now, I don't like the, dis uh, the, the, the Disco Bolt Charge. I think it's uh, yeah, not something that we need. Also, it needs a, uh, a strategic resource. And I'd rather not go into that just now. We could say Mining Station's production by... 10% but then again we would benefit more from getting uh, strategic resources so let's just make sure that that continues time project will disappear once Jonathan Archer arrives at earth and he is currently over here he will be in time no worries about that like I said we don't need to speed our way through the game it, it would be a mistake just just enjoy enjoy the time over here um and, and we'll just see. We've got a lot of science ships. We have a few construction ships. He's almost done. So let's make sure we get a observatory. As well as a mining station over there. How far are we? 74. Mm. You are heading over here. Wow, what is up with my computer today? It is lagging. 
Not sure why. Armstrong City, a small settlement of the Armstrong City on the moon has been expanded greatly by new buildings and colonists. Colonists cont uh, continue to flock to the new opportunities on Luna, which is of course excellent. Uh, we'll just see, uh, you're heading over there. And once you are done... Ooh, they're all so nice. It's going to be a meta on modifiers. Because Wolf 424 is not eventually we'll get it once the Federation is formed. Oh, it looks so nice. It's a 14 one. So I've, uh, I'd say we'll go for the 14 one. And we'll start sending our construction ship over here. It should be the same system. So we could just expand over here. We'll be bordering the Vulcans. And we'll do a good trade deal. Archaeological site has been discovered. Somewhere. Cool. And let's continue. Let's speed up a tiny bit. Hmm. The third fleet is just flying by. We, I, I don't really feel the need to get fleets yet. I'm hoping that in the event that will follow from the uh, Dalphonic Expanse, we will be aided by the Tellarites. And in the Dalphonic Expanse, we'll, our relationship with the Endorian Empire will change as well. After launching a Class 5 probe, we have detected damage, uh, a damaged ship. So let's research that. As for you, anomaly discovery chance, yes please, let's take that. Time project, that can go. Let's on pause and continue with our exploration. This scientist is uh, with elusive man is not doing anything. So we're going to be sending you to do anomalies that we missed. Like sleeping dogs, are you being researched? Yes, you are. The silent enemy is going to be researched. Situational logs. There we go. Expeditional leader finishes in true days. So here we go. So, Captain Jonathan Archer has left his ship now and is heading towards the Expanse. Uh, and it, it, that's why I want to send him. Captain Jonathan Archer has been selected to lead the mission into the Delphonic Expanse to gather intelligence about his Indy. Starfleet has gone to great lengths to accelerate the construction of its most advanced starship, the Enterprise, for Jonathan Archer to command for the duration of this expedition. Where contact with the Earth is expected to be limited. With the new Warp 5 engine, advanced defensive systems and a confident, um, contingent of soldiers from the Military Assault Command Operations, or MACO, the Enterprise is the United Earth's best hope for survival. The flagship uh, will be unavailable for construction while Jonathan Archer is exploring the Delphonic Expanse. So, we got an empty ship, and we'll get the Starship Enterprise, so we could go ahead and recruit another scientist. Mm, let's go with this one. We need to start leveling up other scientists that have different traits, so like this guy. We're going to be pausing here for... Please, pause for a second. And start sending you over here. Because there are more species that we need to get to know. And these are more likely to join a potential federation. So, very important. Let's see. The number of scientists across the United Earth believed to have... Thank you very much. A number of scientists across the United Earth believe that they have identified sign of changing of the timeline. Oh, understood. So, we have an anomaly here. Somewhere below the ice storms, above the permafrost of Chi Draconis 2, there is movement. And we have a silent enemy after a day of orbit in Wolf 359, with no progress in locating the source of the unusual subspace readings. Captain the Elusive Man prepares to give the order to move to the USS something next survey targets. Moments later, a ship, the ship sensors detect a surge in subspace activities following the appearance of an alien ship 
of the port bow. Healing the vessel's proof futile, so... Mm, attempt to follow the ship. Um, within minutes of the aliens entering warp, the, um, the science uh, vessel sensors lock onto the vessel's... Locks on the vessel are starting to deteriorate. Five minutes more and the ship is disappeared from the sensors completely. Captain the elusive man orders the additional power to the sensors and another subspace disturbance is detected um, several light hours away. Arriving at the coordinates of the vessel appeared to be attempting to widen the disturbance through a Tekkerin emission. Who the hell are these guys again? I don't know. What episode is this? If you know, let me know in the comment section. I would be highly, highly appreciating that. Let's hail them. So, the elusive man officers repeats uh, on all frequencies, uh, frequencies hailed to the alien vessels. The bridge crew awaits response in tense silence with only the hum of the ship engines in the background. A alert chimes the aliens have returned to hail. A strange, almost fungal form appears on the view screen and a series of clicks, low moans are heard through the communication system. Oh, I know this one there. The science officer is now uh, the communication officer is going to be trying to decipher that uh, language. Um, I'm Captain the Elusive Man of the uh, USS uh, Frikotov something. The, I need to change the ship. Let me know. What, what should we name our ship in? Because I can't. I can't pronounce this at all. The captain begins before um, defailing the ship's mission in this system. With every new sound of the aliens to the science ship's universal translator system starts to construct a model of its language until a last broken phrase are overlaid following the full sentence. A dialogue is begun and aliens describing themselves as Elashi and said it's on a mission for its overlord and it cannot fail. Its orders were not to interfere with other species, but our hills paint their curiosity. Ten minutes of conversation later, it's announced at its time for its departure and regrets how unlikely it is to ever meet the Captain the Elusive Man again. The Xenologic Department eagerly looks forward to reviewing the data gathered during this encounter so i i am okay let me let me give a second here i know i've been butchering sentences and, and these conversation but for me it's very important that i read i'm trying to get over my dyslexia and words like these don't work frequent stuff Something like that. So, I will butcher a lot of sentences. I hope you at least be okay with that. And if not, then, well, that's the little I can do. So, let's continue here. So, we have an anomaly. Um, the asteroids is emitting some sort of radiation to control the burst. Okay, let's research that. Sleeping dogs! Uh-oh. What the hell is this? After launching a shuttle to investigate, Captain Kreshka O and a small team of the, um, the USS Enkelatus have determined that the crew of the damaged vessel has fallen victim to a, neuro a neurotoxin harmless to the members of the away team, while leaving the aliens unconscious but alive. The Captain Kreshka O has successfully hacked into the central computer and determined the toxins were picked up by the aliens after raiding a nearby star uh, raiding in the nearby star system while looking to repair the uh, the ship's engines in order to lift the vessels from the delta orcus free gravity well the captain kershka and i will not do the o again uh, kershka was attacked by one of the aliens uh, vessel's crew, a female apparently unaffected by the neurotoxin. A fight ensured that Cap uh, Captain Kershka is injured. The alien contacts the USS uh, science ship with a list of demands including the repairs of the ship. A substantial material compensation. She threatens to kill the captain uh, if her demands are not met. So, I don't want my guys to die, so let's accept. And we'll see what will happen. 
Uh, the Expanse, so much to read. After weeks of fruitless search in The Expanse, Captain Jonathan Archer has found its first clue. The owner of a Terillium mining station um, claims to employ a Zini laborer and would be willing to arrange a meeting for a price. One of the Zindi workers' fingers has, proven, <laughs> has provided as evidence uh, an unfortunate mining accident, apparently, which provo uh, provokes more questions. The organic residue from the probes, uh, probe that attacked Earth shares a number of genetic markers in common with those from the fingers. However, they appear to be more separate through related species. That the Zindi may not be a single species confuses the investigation. Captain Jonathan Archer converts with the Enterprise senior staff. Of uh, convince, convince, like a, yeah, okay, and decides how to proceed. Um, we're going to be. Mm, contract. Yeah, let's just buy the guy. The mining facility administrator appears surprised that the captain Jonathan Archer would meet uh, his prize, but agrees to transfer the Zindi worker to the Enterprise after payment is made in full. After being brought to the Enterprise, the worker, a male named uh, Keshrik, ex uh, expresses his gratitude at being freed from what he described as slave labor in the mining facility. Unquestioning, uh, Keswick appears to know nothing of the attack on Earth, but does confirm the location of the Zindi homeworld and that six separate species of Zindi evolved there. Having proved this information, Captain Jonathan Archer agrees to transfer Keswick to a passing cargo vessel, while, uh, which agrees to take him on as crew. So here we go. Awesome. Construction ships not doing anything. Let's pause it for a second because I want to be looking at that. As for you, I would like you to move over there. Let's take a quick look at the observation post, which is over here. So pre-warp, it is um, just passive. Nothing too much. What we want to make sure of there is that they will survive. We can still make two more stations. I'm not really... Going to do that right now, there's no need. Ooh, wow! That's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. That planet, man, look at that, 20. So, we have arrived at the coordinates of the Zindi home system. However, no habitable world can be detected. Instead, an enormous asteroid field fills the star habitable zone. Using predictive modeling, the science officer is able to confirm that the asteroid field uh, came from came from a single world between 150 and 200 years ago. Material analysis of the field indicates the presence of advanced compounds with, uh, that indicates the presence of a warp-faring culture. If this is the Zindi home world, it, it's been broken for a long time. Captain Jonathan orders the return of the original expense search patterns. Let's acknowledge. I wish that you could actually see the ship fly. Complete. You know, because we do know there might be a planet. So, I would like that. Uses Franklin surveyed the asteroid temporarily. Uh, okay, so we'll get some research. Technology. Election has been done. The species of, uh, of ice and ice. Subsidiary climate is not particularly converted to intelligent life. Or indeed life at all. However, some species have evolved to withstand the mass uh, to withstand and master this environment. Wow! So the science of the um, E. H. Kodiak is interested in seeing just how far these beings will go, which is awesome. Let's see what is this. Colony development speed. Cool. Hopefully, it will still affect this. Although I don't think that is going to be the case. That's uh, interesting. Optical computers, meta fabrication, and alloy production. And I'm going for this one. The plus one on alloy production is just too good to pass on. So let's just continue over there. The eye is a hostile fleet present over there. So hopefully he will get away from there. 
Mm, new technology, shield hit points. Let us take beam weapons and zoom out a bit. So the elusive man has nothing to do. Hmm. Survey this system then. We'll get there. So the Andorians, how long will it be until we find them? And can we do something with the Vulcans? The Enterprise has detected a Vulcan distress signal being transmitted from a nearby asteroid field. On inspection, the vessel, the uh, Selaya, Selaya, well, whatever, is heavily damaged and not responding to hails. Boarding the vessel, Captain Jonathan Archer leads the away team or leads the team to make contact with the crew and attempts to effect repairs. Because he was like, oh yeah, now we can suck it up to them. That they need our help is something that they, they don't like. Deep in the Vulcan ship, several Vulcan crew members... Um, in uh, Deep in the Vulcan ship, several cr uh, Vulcan crew members in a frenzied state ambush Jonathan Archer's team. Forcing him to take refuge in the Selenia control room. Analyzing the bio readings from a Vulcan officer's stunned unconscious reveals the psychonic effect has been caused by exposure to terrarium D, which I also believe is something in here. Hmm. believe it is something that could be in here. Yeah, terrarium D, third from the bottom. Which provides the asteroid field. So, investigate a possible cure. Captain Jonathan, Ar Jonathan Archer orders the Enterprise medical staff to exhaust all options to provide a cure for the psychonic Vulcans on the uh, on the ship, while the away teams reinforce their position to in the control room. Nearly a day passes before a series of potential cures are provided. However, all no. Damn it. However, all require testing. Selecting the most likely antidote, a medical team distributes a concussion of terrillium denaturalizing agents through the life support umbibical connections on the ships. Well, minutes the entire crew are is unconscious, allowing the away team to exit the control room. Several hours passes and the crew fall uh, fail to awake again. Oh man, they have permanent brain damage. Ah oh man, that's not how I wanted it to be. That's no joke. Come on, man. Well, anyways, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll end the episode up here. See you next time. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to smash that like button because it will help out my channel a lot. And leave me comments for names in the future. I will make a list. I promise. <sighs> Enjoy your day. Have a good one. Bye-bye.